Hello everyone, today I'm excited to show you how to use this really cool rough notation JavaScript library which makes these amazing scribbles and highlights that you can add to anything you like in your project and you can even animate them as well. Just look at it go. So let's get into it. I am here in my HTML and currently my project is looking rather plain. So let's fix that with some wonderful rough notations. And the first thing to do is to bring the library in. So when you go to roughnotation.com, there's a button called view on GitHub and docs. I will hit that and then scroll down to installation. And you've got two options, NPM or loading via a script tag. And I'm going to do the script tag option. So copy that and then over in my HTML, copy that into the body. And one gotcha I experienced was that in order for this to work, I had to add type equals module to my index.js script as well. So just watch out for that one. Next, I want to import it into my JS and that looks like import. And there are two things I want to import. They are annotate and annotation group. And I will explain a bit more about what these are shortly. And I'm importing them from this absolute path. So copy this into line one. So now it's time to add our amazing notations. And if we look at what the finished project will look like, you can see the items I'm going to scribble on. And I have given them all an ID. So we've got the title, we've got the author, and then a few parts of the text I have wrapped just in spans. So this is going to allow me to grab them over in the JS. So this is all rather repetitive, but at least it's easy. So we have const h1 is document dot get element by ID and then h1. You can also use query selector if you like. I don't really think there's a huge difference. So just go with whatever you fancy. So now go to copy that down a few more times and then switch out the name of, of the variables and the ID. And just to check that we really are cooking on gas, let's give one a console log. That is looking good. I won't test them all. I might regret it, but you know, we'll see. I like to live dangerously. So now is the exciting part. Going to start. Yes, we're going to add some scribbles. I'm so excited. So let's kick off with our pink underline scribble at the top. And that looks like this. Const a1. So if you head over to GitHub, they actually give you examples of how to use this library. And I'm just using the same variable names they've gone for, but you can call it whatever you like. And that equals annotate. What do we want to annotate? H1. And now we have to tell it what type of annotation we want. So on the roughnotation.com page, you will see all of the cool different types we can have underline, box, circle, highlight, and so on. So go nuts and choose whichever one you like. And you can also click on the GitHub page, the basic demo, which is quite good because it tells you how to use it nicely. Wait for it to work. Look at that loader. So here they are. I'm going to go with the underline one. First of all, open curly brackets, type underline in quotes, and this is an object. So we need a comma. And then we can do color, obviously hot pink. And now in order to run the annotation, we just do a one dot show and away we go. Wow. Amazing. And the good news is adding all the others after this is much easier because you can just copy down the lines and switch out the things that you want to change. So going back to my little plan, the next thing I'm going to do is highlight the author. So const a2 is going to be annotating the author. Good old Kafka, he's got a highlight and I've gone for this nice sky blue color. So yeah, you can also use uh, hex colors, probably all different types of colors. I've only tried these two so far. Save that and of course, don't forget, to run it. I do that every time and wonder why it's not working. So there we go. So now we're going to fill in the other annotations that I want to do. Nice and quickly. So A3 is Gregor Samsa. So that is the name variable. He's got a nice circle in the color orange red. And what's cool is if I load that one, you can also add padding. So I'm going to do padding and I'm going to make that two and 10. So you see that has increased the top and bottom padding by two pixels and the side padding by 10 pixels. And next up, I've got the square scribble. 
And that is A4, my adjective. And this one is called box. And I used violet for that. There it goes. And finally, I'm going to add these nice big brackets. Much the same thing again, except it's A5. It's the P3 variable. And that one's called bracket. And I've used a nice dark red color. Oops, not working because it's bracket, not bracket. Now the eagle-eyed among you would have noticed that my original had two brackets and this is only rendered one. That's because the default is just to render one on the right hand side, but I can add the other one by doing brackets and then left, right. Two brackets a go-go. And you can also change the stroke width. And to do that, you just do stroke width. Let's go nuts. 10. Whoa. Okay, that's maybe a bit too nuts. I'll go for four. Very nice. Now you're probably thinking, this is not particularly dry. And the other thing about it is, doing it like this makes all of the animations run at the same time. So it's nicer if you use the annotation group functionality. And to do that, we do const ag equals annotation group. And in that, we put an array of the annotations we want to run. So in my case, it's going to be A1, A2, all the way to A5. So I can now comment these out and just do ag dot show. Let's give that a go. So you will now see it's running the annotations one after the other. And you can change the order of them as well. So I could say that I want to have A1 last. Let's see what that looks like. So it does everything and then finally underlining the title. Not bad. I'm going to put it back now to A1 at the start. Now, not everyone is a fan of animations, but they would still hopefully enjoy these annotation effects. So what we can do is use a media query to check whether they prefer reduced motion. And if they do, we can turn those animations off. And to do that, we do const media query equals window dot match media. And then we're going to tell it what we're looking for, which is first reduced motion being set to reduce. And what that actually means is the person has in their settings somewhere clicked to reduce the motion in their browser. Now we've done that, we're going to run a conditional statement to turn off the animations if they do prefer reduced motion and leave them on otherwise. And that looks like if media query dot matches, then we want a1 animate to be false. And we want that for all five of them. And then finally, we want to run our AG show. So I have now turned on my reduce motion setting. Just to prove to you this is actually working, I will load a brand new page. So you see it loads everything animation free. Now, if you're wondering what this actually means, I will turn off my reduce motion setting again, which turns animations back on and then show you how to turn off just one of the animations. So if we choose A1 and we put animate, false. So now you see all of the animations are running except the one on the H1. So that is effectively what is happening down here, but only if reduced motion is turned on. So there we have it. That's how to use this really cool JavaScript library called Rough Notation. I hope you enjoyed it. I love watching the scribbles running around if you know any other libraries and dependencies you'd like me to make a video about, drop them in the comments below. I'm really keen to find out some new things I can use. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.